Welcome to BP Online. We're a church that meets in North Central Calgary with people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, and we're excited you're joining us today. We hope that as you watch online, you're encouraged and challenged in your faith, and most of all, that you encounter Jesus. If you're checking us out for the first time, welcome. You're in the right place at the right time. Whether you're watching us at home or on the go, we hope you'll be impacted by the service today. Thanks for joining us. We will be starting in just a few moments. Well, welcome to church this weekend. We're so glad that you've tuned in with us. And why don't you stand right there in your room? I know it's, it's, it's comfortable to sit back with that coffee and just to stay there and, and just watch along. But you know what? Worship is not a, uh, a, a time to sit back and just observe what's going on. It is meant to be participated with. And so we want you to participate with us this weekend. So stand up, stretch out a little bit. And uh, let's get ready to worship and really just join in. And don't let other distractions come in. Just join in with the worship team as we enter into the presence of God. So, Father, we just thank you that we get to gather together this weekend. Hundreds of us all over this city, Lord, joining together with our voices to worship you. God, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you in every home. And Father, we pray that you will fill our lives with your presence. As we speak to you in worship, speak back to us through your spirit and tell us all the things that we need to hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
your house, your place, our praise becomes your house, your place. Yes, it does. Our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. Our praise becomes our praise.
nations, of every nation, of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up, I don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Amen. He is our salvation. This week we've started our, our 10 days of praying and fasting towards Pentecost. And on day one on Thursday, we prayed for 
Jesus, sanctify us, cleanse us, forgive us. And on day two, uh, on Friday, we pray, empower us. Let your spirit empower us to live the lives that you've called us to. And on day three, on, on Saturday, we, we've prayed, baptize us. Get rid of the old wineskin, something fresh and something new from you, God. Fill us with your spirit all over again. And then on Sunday, we're praying for guidance. God, guide us as we go forward. I want us to lift those things up this weekend as we, as we transition from worship to looking into the word today. But boy, God, we just thank you that you are the one that forgives us that you've given your son Jesus so that we can be sanctified, that we can have right relationship with you. We thank you that you empower us and you baptize us with your spirit. Lord, that we don't have to live on yesterday's blessing, Lord, but today, fresh and anew, we can experience from you. And God, we pray that you will guide us into our future, guide us into the things that are happening around us. Give us wisdom to make wise choices, Lord. And Father, we also, this weekend, we lift up Israel. And we lift up, Father, what's going on in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And God, we pray for the peace of Israel. God, we pray for wisdom for the leaders there. God, that they would know how to de-escalate this. And Father, that your kingdom would come. Father, your kingdom would come into the hearts and lives of every Palestinian into the hearts and lives of every Jewish person. Father, that the Christians that are in that area will be the light in the darkness right now. Father, speaking life and helping out in these circumstances. Jesus, protect those that are in harm's way. And Father, we thank you that you work all things for good for those that love and trust you and are called according to your purposes. And so God, the challenges that we are facing here the challenges that we're going through at work and we're going through doing school online and the things that we're going through in homes and, Father, the things that we're going through just in society and the pandemic and everything else. God, we know you're going to work all things for good. We know you're going to work all things for good because that's who you are. So, Father, we put our lives in your hands and we welcome you to continue to speak into our lives this weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. We have some announcements for you. Why don't you check them out? Well, welcome to BP Church Online. We're so glad that you tuned in with us this weekend. Uh, in just a few minutes, Pastor Norell is going to come and he's going to speak from 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, so grab your Bible or whatever you might have that has text on it and uh, we can read along together and follow along with Pastor Norell. Just before he comes, we have a few announcements for you. Uh, the first one I want to bring to your attention is I just want to address the ideas that are floating out there around the COVID vaccines. Now, depending on what COVID vaccine you might be interested in, there's lots of information on the scientific end of things that you can look up and check out for yourself. Uh, on the spiritual end of what the COVID vaccine is all about, there's nothing spiritual about it. That's my professional opinion. I can't speak professionally about the science, but about the Word of God, I certainly can. And the vaccine is not anything spiritual. It's not the mark of the beast, it's not the antichrist, there's nothing about it that is spiritual. It's like taking a Tylenol, it's medicine when it comes to the Bible. When it comes to the science, that's something you would have to look up for yourself. Uh, there is a ton of information out there, uh, so I encourage you to look at the true science things, not people's opinions uh, on that. Uh, John Hopkins University has done a study that addresses a lot of the concerns or thoughts that are out there. We'll throw that link uh, in the discussion for you and you can look at it and make your own decision as far as what the science is. But theologically, there's nothing to it, folks. Uh, it is not a scriptural anything or spiritual anything. On other news, <laughs> We have a lot of things going on here at the church and we want to encourage you to be joining in with us 
on prayer. Prayer especially because on Saturday evenings at 5.30, we have pre-service prayer. And on Sunday morning at 8.30 in the morning, we have pre-service prayer. You can join those by clicking on the prayer box in our website and zooming in with us as we pray. Uh, we also have a 10 days of prayer coming up as we lead into Pentecost. We would love for you to join with us in this. You can go to bpchurch.ca slash grow, click on Pentecost, and all of the different prayer points are there to uh, walk along with us as we move towards Pentecost starting this Thursday coming. Uh, so I look forward to you joining in on that as we pray towards Pentecost and see what God has in store. We have a few more announcements, so stay tuned. As you guys know, with the new restrictions, we can't meet in person, but we got some amazing things going on for you this week. So first of all, look at your neighbor. I don't know, you can't really hang out with your neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we got after school sessions happening on Wednesday at 5 p.m. I say Wednesday, I meant Thursday. Have worship for five minutes. We're gonna have a word for five minutes. And if you just want a time to unwind, relax, hear the word of the Lord, listen to some good worship, after school sessions is from you. And that's gonna be going every single day for the next 10 days. Why are we doing that? Because our church, we are fasting and praying for Pentecost. And as a youth ministry, we wanna support that. The second thing we got for you guys is this Friday, this Friday is gonna be amazing. I know that we don't have youth in person, but we're gonna be doing a Zoom call. Now, before you cut this video, we're calling this three in 30 minutes. What are we gonna try and do? In 30 minutes, we're gonna try and make you do three things. We're gonna try and make you cry. We're gonna try and make you laugh. We're gonna try to make you think. What does that mean? We're gonna try and make you um, play some games. You guys might lose, you guys might cry. We're gonna make you think. Denica is bringing an amazing diva. You, got, you guys might cry because of that. Also, we're going to make you laugh. We got an amazing activity. Renzo and I planned for you guys. You don't wanna miss it. And everyone can participate in 3 for 30 this Friday at 7 p.m. You don't wanna miss it. Hey ladies, it's Andrea here inviting you to a woman's night, June 11th. It's called Hearts Arise. We're inviting Dr. Tope Roberts to come and speak on her book, Still I Rise. This is gonna be a wonderful evening, so register today at bpchurch.ca. Well, as we continue to go through this COVID season and the restrictions in place, we're not able to gather in person. Of course, we're gonna be coming to you online. And I'm excited today to have Pastor Norell speak uh, from 2 Peter chapter 2. So why don't you give him your full attention and click the clap button on your screen to welcome him uh, as he comes. Welcome to church uh, this weekend. We have been walking through an incredible series on 1 and 2 Peter. And um, it's been a great series. There's been lots of truths that we have learned. And uh, I'm going to be focusing upon 2 Peter uh, chapter 2 uh, this weekend. And um, the uh, first Peter really focused upon uh, en encouraging the persecuted Christians. It dealt with the external challenges that the community faced. And uh, Second Peter really it's written to warn the Christians of the false teachers and that were in their community. And that was more of an internal focus of that chapter. And so, so Peter was, was um, really just taking the time just to, to allow them to really, in, in, spite, in light of their struggle, in light of the, the, the challenges, that he continually spoke to them about being strong in the Lord and, and, and being um, and immovable and, and being steadfast. First Corinthians chapter 15 and, and, and uh, verse 58 tells that and says this, these words, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and let nothing move you. And so, so Peter was, was taking that particular truth and allowing that to really settle into the hearts of the early church. And so the big idea I think that we want to really land on uh, this weekend is, is this, and that is that we need to pursue the Lord to stand firm in the face of false teachers and, and false prophets that, that may be in, in the midst of our, our, our community. And so, so um, we, we need to uh, acknowledge uh, our knowledge of God, 
uh, through his word, is the first line of defense against the conflicts that, that, um, the, that, that we may face, um, against conflicts that threaten to tear us apart. And so the focus of Second Peter really is around false teachers that would come into their, their, their midst. I want you to say with me, um, counterfeit. Or if you're sitting with someone in your, in, um, on the couch, just nudge them and say, counterfeit. Um, it, it is uh, not a surprise that, that, uh, the, uh, that Peter reserved some of the strongest words um, for false teachers that were in the midst of the, uh, of the early church. And um, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse... Uh, verses 1 to 3 really begins to lay this down. He says, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction uh, on themselves. And it goes on to say that many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has, been, has not been sleeping. And uh, almost as long as we've had a truth, we've also had deception and, and, and falsehood. Um, I have before me a, a, um, a, a $100 bill. Um, uh, I know that many of you would like this $100 bill. It's fresh. I just got it from the bank today. And... Uh, um, and I know, I know without a doubt that you would love me to give you this $100 bill. Um, and uh, this weekend, uh, Michelle and I will be celebrating our 34th wedding anniversary. And so uh, one of the things that we're going to do is that um, what, uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give her this $100 bill. Um, as a gift for our anniversary. And um, Michelle will probably take this and just probably do whatever she wants to do with this $100 bill. She'll probably take it to the mall and she'll probably be maybe buy a pair of shoes or she might buy a dress or she may buy something for the crafts that she loves to do and kind of do, to, to um, work on. But, um, uh, and the reason why she will do that is because it has value. It's, you know, you can trade with it, you can do whatever you want with it, it you can, uh, and I know that's also the reason why you wish that you were also getting this, because it has value um, for you. Um, but as you also know, there are counterfeits and that also come within our world, and uh, it's so it's important for us to know the, the, the feel, the look of, a, of the true item so that you can determine that whether or not this item is of value um, to you, this $100 bill. And I know that, that when it comes to um, um, money, those that work in the field, those that deal with the counter, counterfeit dollars always say, Take some time to look at the bill. Um, make sure that if it gets wet, it doesn't peel or it, the, it, it, there's, uh, and, and that it doesn't smudge or anything when it's wet or, or, you know, just take some time to flip it over and look at it and look up and you can see that inside of some of these areas that there is um, the value of the bill that's also there as well. And so for, for us to... to um, uh, deal with the counterfeits within our community, we need also to take the time um, to study the real thing. And so it's important for us that when we also study the Word of God or we come to church or we watch something on TV or on the internet these days, that we take the time to know what 
the Word of God says. And so as we walk through uh, this particular chapter today, I want you to keep that in mind. And one of the first counterfeits that we see is that Satan is known as, a, um, as an angel of light. And the scripture says, for such people are false ap uh, um, apostles, deceitful workers, uh, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of, of light. And, and, and the apostle Paul here is just really taking the time to talk about false prophets, and he said these people, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're deceitful. They, they, they pretend that they are people who are following Christ, but they, but they are, are not. And, 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 and part of the reason for that, he said, is that they're, oh, they're following Satan, and Satan, as a result, is doing exactly the same thing. And so he, that Satan, the scripture says, is a counterfeit. He is an angel of light. And then, and then the scripture goes on to say that it is not surprising then if his servants also masquerades as servants of, of righteousness. Lining up to what Peter has taken the time to, uh, to, to, to lay before us and that there are false prophets and false teachers that are amongst us. And then the scripture also in, in, the, in verses 1 through 3 talks about some of the, the characteristics or the portraits of those who are false, um, uh, false prophets and false teachers. And when Pastor Mark preached a couple of weeks ago, he mentioned that false prophets and false teachers point us away from God. They deny Jesus as Lord. And, and Peter doesn't say in this particular passage of Scripture uh, what, what that denial in, in, in case, but it, it could have encased that the work of Jesus, his ministry, his deity. There's so many things that, that false prophets will, 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 will deny. Um, but the, the, another characteristic of a false prophet is that they're interested more in popularity than, 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 than truth. Uh, they, they just really want to see, um, um, get them, want to gain popularity, be popular, and so they will water down the truth so that they themselves will be popular. Interested in getting more than giving is also another characteristic trait of a false prophet. They, they just really want to, to, to get your money, they want to get your praise, they want you to get, 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 get you to follow them in, in terms of the, 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 their, their teaching that they would be, be teaching. And then also, they want to lead people away from, from God. And so these are just some of the simple characteristics that are laid out there. And so, so the question is, what do we do about this? What are some of the things that we, we, we need to do when it comes to this? And I think there are a couple of guidelines. And if you have a notepad, you may want to just write a couple of these things down. Stop. Um, the, the first thing that I think that we ought to do is just to simply stop. When you hear teaching and when you hear questionable teaching or when you hear teaching that you're not sure of, um, that, that we just stop and pause and think deliberately and refuse to follow a teacher just simply because he or she seems to be okay. The second thing that we need to do is to um, observe the teacher's life. Um, and we need to just um, consider all of our choices, make sure, uh, make careful observation into the life of the teacher and those that are following around and about them. And if, it, it, and if it doesn't line up with the scriptures, then we need to find ourselves another teacher that we can, we can, um, we can also work with. Um, and then thirdly, is that whole area of um, uh, just really uh, taking the, the time to check everything out, taking the time to, to, to listen and carefully and make sure that we filter everything through um, Scripture and allowing the Holy Spirit to work and to speak and to communicate to us in and through our lives. Can somebody say amen? I think it's a very important piece that we need to, to look at. The second thing that I want us to take a look at this, uh, this weekend is God's righteous character. 
um, when it comes to um, de- uh, when it comes to God dealing with um, false prophets and false teachers, that God's righteous character um, comes across and it comes through incredibly strong here. Second Peter chapter two and verses. Um, um, 4 through to 11 begins to lay some of this out, and uh, the, the Scripture says, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be hell for judgment, I want you to, first of all, I want you to, uh, we're just going to stop here for just a moment, but I want you to see that I've highlighted the if. And through this passage of Scripture, uh, through this sec- segment of Scripture, if is going to be mentioned a number of times. It is probably a very long, long sentence that is there. But God is speaking about the, uh, the false prophet and, 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 what, uh, and, and the punishment that will come their way for deceiving God's people. And so he says, if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, and, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness. It's a warning to those who are, are, are false leaders and false and teachers and that, that if they continue on in their behavior, in their actions, then, then, then God will remove them from uh, his presence. And then remember the story of Noah um, and, and, and the flood and how God stepped into um, that situation. And the scripture says, if God did not spare the ancient world when he brought uh, the flood on its, its godly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and, and, and seven others. Again, a warning. He said, if, 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 if God's punishment for the angels did not work to, to cause the false prophets to recognize that, 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 that God is not working on their side with what they're delivering and what they're teaching, um, then maybe even Noah and the story of Noah would, would cause them to at least pay attention. But the, and so false teachers must know that, that God's judgment will be swift and, and, and firm. And we, and, we, and we saw that with Noah when God took the time to get Noah out there to, to, to preach while he was building the ark. And, and, and people still did not respond to him. God took God, God's judgment came down upon those people. And then the scripture says, if God uh, condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what, it, what is going to happen to the ungodly, and again the principle is laid down, again for the false teachers to, you know, and to, to, to see that God's hand of punishment will be against them because of the things that they're teaching, um, that, 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 that with their lifestyle and the, and, and the condemnation that God would bring on towards them, um, that, 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 that God did it for, and punished Sodom and Gomorrah, that God will also punish them for the similar things and similar actions that they were taking. So if God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if God rescued, and now we begin to see the picture of, of how God deals with the righteous, um, and that God always loves his righteous. He's always, he always has a heart of compassion. He always cares for those that he loves. And if God rescues Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the and depraved conduct of lawlessness, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in, the righteousness, in, in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and he heard. We see now God stepping in and bringing righteousness into um, 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 uh, um, 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 rescuing the, the, um, his own people, rescuing those that were following, um, um, that were following the Lord. And, and God rescued Lot, and then we also see that, that not only did God rescue Lot, but earlier we saw also God rescuing Noah. And if this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials, to hold the unrighteousness for the punishment on the day of, 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 of judgment. Now, this is an incredible comfort. Um, to the believer. 
incredible comfort. I know it comforts me, those of us who are following the Lord, who are living our lives towards the Lord, that, that, that God knows how to rescue his people. He knows how to, to, to bring us out of those challenging situations, and he knows how to, to um, um, protect us. And so here is a very clear pattern that is presented um, here in, in, um, in these few verses. If God knows how to save Noah and, and seven others, and if God knows how to save Lot and, and, and his two daughters before destroying the city, then, and you can underline that word then, then he knows how to save those who belong to him. They have absolutely nothing to fear. So you and I have absolutely nothing to fear because we know that the Lord is on our side. We know that the Lord is working on our behalf. Can you say amen um, this weekend? And the third area is the truth. Truth matters to God. Truth matters to God. The scripture uh, and uh, lays it out in verse 10. He says, um, these false teachers were daring and arrogant. They are, are not afraid to heap abuses on the glorious ones, whereas uh, angels who are stronger and more powerful do not heap judgment on them from the Lord. Uh, this, again, uh, very strong words from, from Peter as he he. he takes the time to speak against the false prophets and false leaders that were in their community. And he says that these individuals were just really daring. Um, they, were, they were very arrogant. Uh, the picture here is of very, very um, proud individuals who just really try to build themselves up while, while tearing others down. And they were bold in doing that. They were, they were arrogant. They really showed no respect for authority or those that were in authority, and they were not afraid to, to attack or to defame um, high people, even to the point that, the, 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 that, that they would even, uh, they, they would even um, tear uh, or deny what God, um, the teachings of God, so that they would be the strongest voice within, within the room. And... Um, Daring and, and that whole essence of, of, of arrogance really comes across really, really strong here. They took the time, these false prophets took, really took the time just to, to, to make sure that their opinions were the only thing that mattered. And that one of the things that they did was that they were so arrogant that they would even defy God to get what they wanted. And there are people within our community um, or within community in general at large that you know that uh, they, they just defame God or they, they deny God so that their own opinion is the only thing that matters in the room. And, 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 and Peter really speaks harshly on this. Uh, um, he, he really um, speaks with a very firm voice because in essence what he's saying He's saying that these false teachers says, um, I'm going to have it my way. Um, I am going, and there's a famous song that kind of walks along with that in, in, in terms of that. They, they just really do not care to restrain their minds and their tongues when passing judgment on those that, over, that are um, ab above them. And so um, the scripture also tells us that these false teachers will go after those who are weak in the faith. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop singing, sinning. Um, they seduce the unstable, which is the new believer. They are experts in greed and a curse with, 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 um, with brood. And so, so very strong words coming from, from, from Peter. And, um, uh, they, uh, and Peter says that these individuals will attach those who are new, uh, will attack those who are new in faith. They will try to lead them away. And so therefore, it's very important, again, for you and for me to be in his 
word, in the word of the Lord, so that we will become strong, and then make sure that we also, um, with the young believers amongst us, as, uh, uh, that we um, protect them, in essence, and take the time to guide them through the teachings of the word. So it's important for that principle to be allowed uh, uh, to develop within, uh, within our lives. These people are, 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 are springs without water and mist driven by the storm. Peter goes on and he's, and he, and, and, and he said, their, their words are empty. I mean, have you gone to that point in that place um, in your, your life, in your, your journey, and you've gone to a place to get water, you turn the tap on, or, or in essence, you kind of have the, the, he's talking about wells here, and there's no water. Uh, something happens in your spirit. It just sort of, it just sinks. I thought there was going to be water there, or, or a storm, and you thought there was a storm coming, and the cloud is all there, and, but there's no rain behind that. It's just empty. And, Paul, and, and Peter is just simply saying that these individuals, these false prophets and false teachers, he says that, that are amongst us, he says, it's just they, they come with empty words, but their mouths are empty, both for words and by appealing to the, um, to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in air. And so, so again, he, he lays a point down that they, they, they go after those young, younger people of faith and, 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 and deceiving them and, 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 being, and being a counterfeit to them in terms of their lives. And so, and so we need to recognize that uh, in terms of people. But God's truth God looks for truth. He desires truth. And the scripture says that God is truth. For He says, for I proclaim the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. He, for his work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. A God of truth. And without injustice, righteousness, righteous and upright is he. So we recognize and we see out of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 3 and 4 that God is a God of truth and that God desires truth in, in every, every aspect. And Satan comes along, tries to bring deception and to, to twist it so that God, um, so, so that what God says causes us to question. And then in verse, uh, then in in uh, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6, it says, And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and in truth. In other words, our God is firm, our God is stable, and our God is faithful. Can you say amen? Which is total opposite of what false teachers will do and what false teachers will bring into a community when they're there. And we are thankful that the God that we serve is a true and faithful God. And so the question that you ask at this time is, why does all of this matter? Well, the, right at the very beginning of, of this particular chapter, it simply said that, that the false teachers will sneak in amongst us, and they will try to bring deception, and, and they're bold in what they're doing, they're greedy in what they're doing. And for you and I to remain strong, for you and I to remain strong in following the Lord, we need to do several things. And, 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 and the first thing that we need to do is that we need to trust God in all things. At times when we don't understand what's going on, we need to trust God in all things. The second thing that we need to do is pray. But not just simply just say prayers. Pray like you mean it. Say, pray like you mean it. And the third thing that we ought to do is that we need to read the Scriptures, take time to read the Scriptures. Take time to get to know your God through your prayer and through, through praying and through reading the Scriptures. Be a student. Study the Word. And then the fourth thing that we ought to do is to live it out daily. Look for the miracles of God as God works through your life in and through all of your situations. And, and expect God to be there walking with you and ministering to you and strengthening you. And, strengthening you. and then finally, be a light. Share 
what God is doing in to your friends and those around your community. And these are, are just a several, there are probably many more, but these are just some, some key areas that we can do to help strengthen our faith, to help strengthen our knowledge so that we will not easily be led astray by false prophets. And so we're going to just take a moment and we're just going to, um, um, Pastor Mark is just going to lead us into a song and then I'm going to come back. So don't let your heart be troubled Hold your head up high Don't fear no evil Fix your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you Take courage, hold on, be strong Remember where our help comes from So don't let your heart be troubled Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil Fix your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. The song says that we just need to put our eyes upon Jesus. We need to focus on Him. The way to combat deception, um, within our world or deception within the church is to have our eyes focused upon Jesus. And you may be watching this weekend and you may not have um, taken the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and to invite him into your life, which is the very first step of recognizing who Jesus is. Jesus came into the world. He died on the cross for your sin. And all he needs you to do, all you need to do is to simply give your life to Him. And I'm going to pray just a simple prayer with you that just simply says this, Jesus, I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed. Jesus, thank you for going to the cross for my sins. Jesus, Please forgive me. I choose to live the rest of my life for you. If this is the very first time that you've prayed that prayer and invited Jesus into your life, just right there in the chat, why don't you just sort of hit the button that's there and, uh, and uh, we'll be able to send you some information and, and uh, connect with you and just tell you just a little bit more about your journey. There's just one more verse of Scripture that I want you to, um, uh, to take with you as we've been talking about truth and contending for truth and for righteousness in the midst of false teachers and false prophets that are around and about us. And it's this. So be on your guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of those wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to him both now and forever. Amen. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just come to you asking, Lord, that you just Help us to be strong in you. Uh, strengthen our faith. Father, we pray for the young, um, the, the, uh, for those that are just following you, just coming to know you for the first time. Just protect them. And we pray, Lord Jesus, O oh Lord, that, that you will be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. 
If you'd like more information about our ministry, visit bpchurch.ca. Have a great week and live the ultimate life.